Hello everyone. So recently Hoover's revealed their new 3.7 special program in which they revealed all the upcoming rerun banners for 5 star characters alongside a new 4 star character called Kirara. A uh, 4 star Dendro Shielder. And they also revealed a bunch of updates for uh, TCG along with a one an old 1.5 Vagabond event rerun which that one I think is going to be very good. I am actually really excited for that when I like the first event. Uh, that being said, I wanted to make a, well, hopefully short video discussing, well, all the upcoming character rerun banners along with specifically El Haytham. I do want to make a case for people who want to pull him because I do believe that he has some solid competition in the form of Yaimiko and Kazuha. So, I do want to, well, let me put it this way. I'm, I'm making this video in order to essentially discuss the pros and cons of El Haytham layout, his capabilities, his advantages, and maybe for people who are essentially may, perhaps confused, perhaps they don't know whether they should pull for Yaimiko, Kazuhar, El Haytham, which unit they want to get, uh, share my experience and help them out in their decision. I want to get this out of the way early on because I know a lot of people are going to have this question. And a lot of people already know the answer to that question, which is, who's the best upcoming character in patch 3.7? What's the best upcoming rerun pack? And objectively speaking, not a single one of the uh, f five star characters that are coming in patch 3.7 is going to be bad. They're all good characters. They all have their uses. That being said, objectively speaking, Kazuha is, for a fact, the best character in patch 3.7. If you don't have Kazuha, and you would like to get Kazuha, and you think that Kazuha is going to be valuable for your account, well, realistically speaking, he will be valuable for your account, I do highly suggest that you pull for him. Uh, that being said, if you're someone who does not have Kazuha, or does not want Kazuha for some reason, or maybe you just want to pull for some other character, well, I'm going to make a case for all the upcoming characters, and specifically El Uh Yaimiko... Back when she came out, during the final stages of Inazuma, she was she was not really the best character. She was she was heavily bugged. She used to have a bug where, for some reason, her turrets, her E, it would target the Animogranas for some. I'm not sure why. It would prioritize hitting Animogranas before enemies, e even if the enemies are closer to you, which was actually really funny back in the days. Uh, that being said. Time has moved on, Yaimiko's bugs were fixed, and most importantly, Dendro came out. And with the release of Dendro, not just Yaimiko, but every single Electro character was significantly elevated. Because Dendro obviously introduced new reactions such as Hyper Bloom, Virgin. Well, Virgin has nothing to do with uh, Electro, but Hyper Bloom and uh, Quicken, Aggravate, which significantly improves uh, the performance of Dendro characters. So, back when Yamiko came out, I personally didn't think that she was good enough to compete with the top Electro characters, characters like Fischl, Raiden Shogun, and Beidou. That being said, now that Dendro came out, now that her bugs have been fixed, she essentially got, like, shadow buffed to the point where she's now one of the best Electro sub-DPS units in the entire game. So if you do want to pull for Yaimiko, I do think that she's a very good character. I do think that she is a very valuable character, and I see why people might want her or might think that she could be useful for their team comps or their account in general. So yes, Yaimiko is... Here's the thing with Yaimiko. In my opinion, it is very, very difficult for you to pull Yaimiko and regret having Yaimiko on your account. It is... Almost impossible, actually. It's So, Kazuha is one of those characters where if you get Kazuha, it's also, like, nigh impossible for you to regret getting Kazuha because of how good he is as a character. That being said, Yaimiko is, in my opinion, on the same level in terms of, like, being satisfied with the character that you get. And the reason I say this is because you can play Yaimiko on field, that's it's not her optimal playstyle, but you can if you want to. That being said, Yamiko is an off-field DPS unit, sub-DPS unit actually, and 
getting value from her turrets, getting value from her off-field damage is extremely easy. And you can just simply have her do damage while you play your, your favorite characters on field. And it, it's just really easy to get value out of this character. Moving forward, we have Yoimiya. Now, if I would rank the upcoming 3.7 banners in terms of, like, the raw value of the 5-star that you're getting, I would personally rank it as Kazuha number 1, El Haytham number 2, Yaimiko number 3, very closely tied with El Haytham, like, almost the same level of value, and then Yoimiya number 4. Now, that does not mean Yoimiya is a bad character. The notion that Yoimiya is a bad DPS unit, the notion that Yoimiya is uh, not going to allow you to clear, like using Yoimiya is not going to allow you to clear Spiral Abyss or any hard content in Genshin. Not that there is that much hard content in Genshin to begin with, but that's that's a topic for a different day, is incorrect. Yoimiya is going to allow you to clear the hardest content in the game as long as you use her correctly. She will do her job, which is doing damage. And she does it quite effectively. She is a ranged uh, DPS unit, ranged single target DPS unit. And she is very good at what she does. And I really... Well, here's the thing. Yoimiya isn't gonna out-damage characters like Hu Tao. She's not gonna out-damage characters like El Haytham. She will in some very specific situations. That being said, overall, characters like Hu Tao and El Haytham are gonna objectively just do more damage on field that being said she is so convenient to use she is so easy to use she is so well i don't want to say good to use because she does have some clunkiness issues where she can get interrupted while casting her auto attacks that being said those issues can be fixed with a shielder like toma or zhongli uh but her ease of use is very valuable because a lot of people play this game on mobile, right? Or let's say one day you just wake up and you don't want to try. And Yoimiya is the perfect AFK character. She is such an easy character to use, such an easy character to pilot, that it's really hard to play her and go wrong with her. Like, as long as you essentially just press E when you have energy in order to proc Shamanawas. You could also use Echoes of uh, the Artifact set, Echoes of an Offering, but I do recommend Shamanawas over Echoes. That being said, if you don't want to farm... It, it, I mean, Shimanaus comes with emblems, so... Realistically speaking, you would want to farm that domain. But let's say you're, like, a Shao main, like me, or, like, Xyox, and you'd farm Vermilion for over two years aware. Uh, and you have a lot of good Echoes of an Offering pieces, and you want to just play your Mia with Echoes of an Offering, she'll, she'll work with it. Not her best in slot set, but it's pretty good. So as long as I was saying, you, as long as you proc Shimanawas with her with her E and then auto attack, it's almost impossible to go wrong with Yoimiya. That being said, now let us move to the main character of this video, which is El Haytham. Now, back when I ranked the characters, I did say that the most valuable character in the game is Kazuha. And if you do not want Kazuha, or if you don't have, uh, sorry, if you want Kazuha, and if you have, if you don't have Kazuha on your account, then I highly recommend that you do pull for Kazuha. That being said, El Haytham, in my opinion, is well, he's not underrated. People, I think most people understand how strong he is, but I don't think that most people realize how valuable this character can be to your account. He is. A really, really, really good character. And I'm gonna uh, make a case for him in this video, discussing his pros and cons. He has, he actually has very few cons. It's, he's not really a character with many weaknesses, especially if you get, uh, if you go far, further in his constellations. Now, I do have to say this. It is extremely, well, I, I personally just simply highly not, don't recommend pulling for constellations. It is simply more valuable to get more characters rather than getting more constellations because characters unlock new gameplay. Constellations simply improve the characters that you have. And sometimes they don't even improve them that much. That being said, I do think some of El Haytham's constellations are really good in terms of quality of life. Starting off, uh, for 
people who might not know or maybe people who have forgotten Elhitham's abilities. His normal attacks are a simple 5-strike uh, combo. Uh, they do look cool. I do have to say, this character, well, one of his pro pros, in my opinion, this character looks really good. And it's something that is, in my, well, at least for me, it's something that's really rare to see in Genshin. Like, this guy, he looks good. This is a character that you can pull and just walk around with in the world of Genshin, and he looks badass. So I think that is, that it's not really, it's not a reason really to uh, validate his strength in terms of meta or his damage or I guess his value as a unit. But, well, you gotta give him something for looking this cool, right? And his normal attacks are also really good. They supplement his uh, style, they work really well, they are very fluid, and they are quite fast. Not really the fastest, I think Xiao attacks faster, but they are, they are considerably fast. And the value of his normal attacks is that they do uh, considerable damage. It's not like... His, not, his autos are not gonna hit as hard as someone like... Uh, Let's say Ayato. Ayato. Well, they will hit as hard as Ayato, but Ayato hits significantly faster, which allows Ayato to do more damage with his normal attacks. That being said, the primary value of Alhatham's normal attacks, which goes back to how fluid they are, is they allow him to drive his own mirrors really well, and his mirrors are essentially his the bulk of his damage. So, how do his mirrors work? Uh, Alhatham's mirrors are essentially a Think of them so as something like Sinchul's coordinated attacks from his ultimate ability, Elemental Burst. Uh, except they are on Elhatham, and he can generate them through either plunge attacking, charge attacking, using his elemental skill, or using his elemental burst, and there are some restrictions along the way. What are the restrictions on Elhatham's uh, mirrors? Well, first of all, I did say that he can generate mirrors through plunge attacking or charge attacking. Uh, this shares a cooldown along with his... Like, the both the plunge attack uh, mirror and the charge attack mirror, they share the exact same 12-second cooldown from his ascension talent, his first ascension talent. And this essentially means that you cannot charge attack, wait for uh, 3 to 4 seconds. I believe his mirrors last for 4 seconds. Let me check. Uh, they last for... As you can see here, his mirrors last for 4 seconds. And what happens with his first ascension talent, if you charge attack, you're going to generate one mirror. If you plunge attack, you're going to generate one mirror. That being said, within 12 seconds, you cannot trigger this effect except once from either charge or plunge attacks. As for his E, his E is going to generate two mirrors. If he has no mirrors on field, it will generate one mirror if he has existing mirrors on field. And pretty much his E is his primary way of generating mirrors at the start of a combo. And this is when you're simply just fighting in the overworld. When it comes to actually using him in a in a proper rotation, things become much more different. He, especially at higher constellations, he tends to have a lot of rotations or a lot of rotation techniques, a lot of styles. Uh, that being said, the combo that you're going to use most of the time is going to be ulting with his uh, elemental burst, which will generate three mirrors if you do not have any mirrors on the field. So the way his elemental burst works, let me just explain it really quickly for, the, for people who do not know. He's going to essentially create a dome, a very small dome that is similar to Kiching's ult, which is why people used to say that he is Dendro Kaching. By the way, this character, I, back when back when he was first released in patch 3.4, people used to say that uh, Elhatham is Dendro Kaching. In my opinion, this cannot be further from truth. They do share similar animations. That being said, in terms of gameplay, they play very, very differently. Obviously, I'm not trying to bash Kaching. Kaching is a character that I like. I think she's a good character. But uh, Elhatham and Kaching, they do not play the same. And that can be significant. For people who, let's say someone li really likes Kiching, but doesn't know how Elhatham plays. And you tell them that Elhatham is Dendro Kiching, right? And they pull Elhatham expecting that he's going to play exactly like Kiching, but Dendro. But they end up figuring out that he does not, and then they're disappointed. Or maybe someone does not like Kiching, 
and does not want to pull Elhaytham because they think that Elhaytham is essentially just Dender Kitchen. But alas, let's go back to his ultimate. So what it does is that, again, it's going to generate a number of mirrors that corresponds to the amount of mirrors that Elhaytham has on field when he casts the ult. Realistically speaking, you're going to start your at C0, you're going to start your rotation with Elhaytham by proccing his elemental burst, uh, swapping to an Electro unit. So let's say, let me actually show this in a domain. I think it will be much easier to show this in a domain. Okay, hello, this is me from the future. I tried to demonstrate Elhaytham's most basic combo in uh, one of the domains. Unfortunately, enemies are too squishy in domains. Well, they're not really too squishy, it's just that my Elhaytham is C6 and he one-shots them, which is not ideal when you're trying to showcase something. So I'm going to try to show it in floor one of these Spiral Abyss. And hopefully we can get it first try. Okay, so the main idea behind uh, Elhaytham is going to be essentially you're going to want to have a an off-field dendro applier that could be nahida yao yao uh, dendro mc uh, baizu uh what else kale i suppose you could also use her ideally you're going to want to use the nahida because she is i don't want to say she's alhaytham's best support she's more like alhaytham's best partner they're one, two of the best pairings in the game he works really well with her she works really well with him and if you can use them together that is fantastic uh, also, her ult gives him 250 EM, plus if you have uh, Nahida's weapon, a thousand floating dreams, it gives him, I believe, an additional 48. I think it's 40 at R1 and 48 at R5, but yeah, essentially what's going to happen is that Nahida is going to give you around 290 elemental mastery just by ulting and having a thousand floating dreams. Now, obviously, if you don't have a thousand floating dreams, that is absolutely fine. You don't need that weapon, but if you do, you do. And. Uh, once you apply Deep Wood, you're going to swap to Elhaytham, ult on Elhaytham, swap to uh, Electro Applier, ult with your... Uh, sorry, not ult, but like, apply your Electro application. Now, ideally speaking, the best uh, Electro Appliers are going to be Fischl, Raiden Shogun, and uh, Kuki, because their uh, animation is short enough that you can deploy their elemental skill, and their elemental skill lasts long enough for Elhaytham to consistently proc spread, which is extremely important. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna apply Deep Wood. Bolt on Nahida to get 290 EM with uh, 1000 Floating Dreams. We're gonna use our fourth slot. Bolt with Elhaytham. Swap, E, catch our mirrors. So, first mirror proc, second mirror proc. We're gonna E, refresh. Again, mirror proc, mirror proc, and then ideally here we'll charge attack. So, Okay, so this is gonna be our last mirror proc. I messed up, but that's fine. We're gonna apply deep wood again. Ult. By the. Ult. Ult. E. Catch our mirrors. And voila. And now we're gonna charge attack. If these beasts are gonna allow me. So now you could be interrupted from your charge attack because. When you have aggressive monsters like the Consecrated Beast, they will, they will, they will be annoying to deal with. But ideally speaking, if you can't get off your charge attack or your elemental skill, you're gonna refresh your mirrors and you're gonna have a 12 to 16 second uptime on your mirror damage duration. Okay, so I was thinking about making a list of uh, rotations and combos that you can use for C6. That being said, uh, I didn't want to make this video too long and ended up deciding to scrap that idea out. Uh, if you guys are interested in uh, a separate independent video that details all, all of Elhaytham's combos, all the available combos that you can use in C0, all the available rotations that you can use in C6, then you can let me know down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make one of those. In terms of artifact sets, Elhaytham's best artifact set is always going to be Gilded Dreams. Uh, until a uh, future Dendro set gets released that is focused on main DPS units and supplements uh, elemental skill damage, because the majority of Elhaytham's damage comes from his normal attacks and elemental skill, primarily elemental skill, uh, which makes the elemental master that you get from uh, Gilded Dreams extremely valuable, because again, Alhaytham triple dips into Elemental Mastery. Not only does he scale with Elemental Mastery on his base scalings, 
where, as you can see here, his mirror scale with Elemental Mastery and Attack. Obviously, Elemental Mastery being better than Attack in terms of scaling. Uh, his ult also scales with Elemental Mastery. His second Ascension passive uh, provides him 0.1 damage bonus for every uh, elemental point in Elemental Mastery that he has, which is essentially just another further uh, scaling in Elemental Mastery for his kit. And this all goes without mentioning the fact that Alhatham's primary way of dealing damage is through activating the Quicken reaction and then uh, spreading all of his mirrors and his normal attacks and his elemental burst in order to do as much reaction damage as possible. Uh, in terms of weapons, Alhatham's weapons are very, very diverse, which surprisingly speaking, Alhatham is a free-to-play friendly character. And the reason I say this is because he has so, so many weapon options. You can run him on Light of the Foliar Incision. Obviously, this is his best in slot weapon. That being said, if you do not have it, the second best in slot is the Primordial Jade Cutter. Extremely good weapon that you can use on so many characters, and it is very, very good on Alhatham. Uh, Harang Dupakufutsu works well. The normal so the normal attack damage bonus from Harang Dupakufutsu is not as ideal as uh, the... Uh, the passives on Primordial Jade Cutter and Light of the Foliar Incision. That being said, the crit rate, in addition to the high base attack and the, uh, and the well, decent passive, provides for a good combination. You could also run him on uh, Scoured Blade. It's not recommended for optimal damage. That being said, if you don't have any other options, Scoured Blade can work. Although I have to say, if you're running him on Scoured Blade, make sure that your uh, other ER sources are essentially zero. Because Scoured Blade pretty much gives you all of the ER that you need. You do not need more than 155 ER. Uh, so if you're running this weapon, make sure that all of your artifacts are focused on offensive stats. In terms of uh, free-to-play weapons, free-to-play options, you can run Iron Sting. You can run uh, Tukabu Shiguri, which is Alhatham's best in slot four-star weapon. You could also run him on uh, Ziphos Moonlight, which is another really good weapon that Alhatham can utilize. It provides him more supportive utilities for the team. Uh, Lion's Roar can work in certain instances. That being said, I do not recommend it as an optimal weapon. That being said, if you have no other option, it will it will do the job. Uh, the Black Sword also works. It's It has the same exact uh, caveats as Haranga Pakufutsu, but obviously Haranga Pakufutsu being uh, quite better than the Black Sword. That being said, if you want to use the Black Sword, it will function. Uh, other options that I might not have mentioned includes the upcoming weapon banner, which Alhatham's uh, Light of the Foliar Incision is going to be featured on, which is another topic that I wanted to talk about. Light of the Foliar Incision is going to be featured alongside Kazuha's weapon, because Alhatham and Kazuha are getting reran at the same time. And because Alhatham and Kazuha are getting reran at the same time, you're going to have two really, really, really good weapons for Alhatham. One is going to be Light of the Foliar Incision, which is his best in slot weapon, and the other one is going to be Freedom Sworn, which is Kazuha's best in slot weapon, and also a very good weapon for Alhatham himself, not only because of the supportive utility that it uh, provides through its passive, but also the main stat of Elemental Mastery, which Alhatham can utilize really well, as we've discussed earlier in this video. Uh, that being said, I should say this. I highly do not recommend people to roll on weapon banners, especially if you're saving up for uh, future characters that are coming soon, or if you don't have enough Primo Gems in order to obtain characters that you want, or do whatever you want with your Primo Gems. Uh, weapon banners can be very dangerous, because the chance of you getting the weapon that you want is not only low, but it also requires around uh, 70, 80 pulls in order to obtain the weapon, assuming you don't get lucky and go to hard pity. Uh, that being said, if you do decide to pull on the weapon banner, both weapons, both Freedom Sworn and Light of the Foliar Incision, are going to be very, very good weapons for Alhatham. Obviously, Light of the Foliar Incision being the best one. In terms of post constellations, I'm going to discuss them really quickly. Uh, again, I do not recommend anyone to pull for constellations. Constellations are not necessary. Alhatham is a perfectly viable unit at C0. That being said, if you do decide to pull for his constellations, his C1 is a good quality of life constellation. It it does unlock some uh, new rotations. That being said, for his primary rotation, which I was showcasing earlier in this video, it does not actually change that much because by the time you use your six mirror procs, because you're going to have uh, two, three mirror procs from your ult, two, three mirror procs from your charge attack, 
and then two, uh, three mirror procs from your uh, elemental skill. By the time you do that, you ideally want to swap to your uh, other units, like your uh, Nahida, your Electro Applier, your fourth slot, uh, and use their elemental skills and elemental bursts, and then swap back to El Hethem, by which uh, that time your elemental burst is going to be back ready. That being said, his E does give him a lot of quality of life, and it does allow him to extend his rotation if necessary, because that cooldown reduction allows you to uh, basically get an extra two sets of mirror procs, or you can even make it four sets of mirror procs if you do a specific combo, which again, I don't want to go into because this video is already longer than I expected. Uh, so Pithy one is a good constellation, not, uh, not anything crazy, but it's pretty decent. Uh, his P2 essentially translates to uh, 200 Elemental Mastery if you have generated 4 mirrors while Elhitham is active on the field. This is just a flat damage increase for all of Elhitham's kit. It is pretty good, not insane, but it does stack up later on with his other constellations, which I'll, which I'll show you. One thing about Elhitham which I should mention is that his constellations, individually speaking, besides C6, individually speaking, they are all really good. Uh, sorry, they are all really mediocre. That being said, when combined together, they are very, very good. They have extremely high synergy with, you, with each other. Uh, his uh, C3 and C5 are essentially just talent upgrades. Most characters, uh, these are generally good. Like, three levels is generally good. Some characters don't care about them, but I'll hate them. Since he's a main DPS that wants to essentially deploy all of his abilities during his uptime on field, these are just good constellations in general. Uh, his C4, however, it's a very interesting constellation. Because one thing you can do with El Haytham, which uh, I'm going to have a clip of that uh, right rolling out right now, is you could use him as a uh, pseudo quick swap unit or have some off field presence with him where you can do a very quick combo where you're going to E, plunge, you're going to hold E, plunge, uh, because holding E allows you to uh, float in the air for a few seconds, which then allows you to execute a plunge command. And once you do that, you're going to plunge, you're going to proc a 3-mirror uh, hit, and then you're going to instantly ult, consume all of your 3-mirror stacks, and then you're going to get the longest possible ult that you can get on Alhatham. And it will give your uh, team members, if you have C4, 90 elemental mastery because you just consumed 3-mirror three, three stacks. Now, on the contrary, if you swap back to Alhatham, it's going to give you 30 dendro damage bonus, which again is very good for Alhatham because now you're on field, you have your three mirrors, you have all of your buffs, and you have 30, an additional 30% dendro damage bonus. Now, where this constellation really, really shines is once you reach C6. Because what happens at C6 is that, first of all, his C6, it's a flat uh, 90, 90 CV. CV means crit value, which, which is crit rate multiplied by 2 plus crit damage, 10 crit rate plus uh, 70 crit damage, is going to be 90 CV. This is obviously crit rate and crit damage. Just a flat increase is almost always good. Unless you're playing Kokomi, crit is the best uh, damage multiplying stat. Uh, for most characters, so, there are situations where it's not, but those are very rare. Uh, but the actually interesting part about his C6, which makes it quite valuable, but again, C6 is a very difficult milestone to reach. For the few people who might be watching this and are going for C6, I'm going to explain why it might be better than you think. It's not just the CV that's valuable. The other really valuable part about Al Hatham's C6 is the fact that no matter what happens, your ult, your elemental burst, it's always going to generate three mirrors, even if you consume three mirrors. And that is very, very significant. Not only can you do the quick combo that I showed you earlier, which is E, hold E, plunge, proc three mirrors, ult, swap to your electro unit. Now you can swap back to El Haytham, and you're going to catch three mirrors. You're going to generate an additional amount of uh, elemental mastery for your team from his C4, 90 elemental mastery, and you will get 30 dendro damage bonus. This is an insane amount of stats that is not only provided to Al Haytham himself from his C4 and C2, but it's also provided to his team through the 90 elemental mastery that his team is going to get from the initial start of the combo. Now, as some closing statements, Al Haytham has 
many, many potential teams that you can use. Uh, Yaimiko, uh, because Yaimiko is coming in patch 3.7 uh, alongside El Haytham. She's going to be the first banner, though, not uh, running with him. Is a very good support for El Haytham. In fact, she is the best uh, Electro slot if you do have her. Uh, El Haytham's best team looks something like this. If you're using him for a pure uh, spread damage team, a pure quick and spread damage, it's going to be Baizu. Nahida, an Electro unit, ideally Kuki or uh, Yaimiko. I use Raiden Shogun because I don't like playing Circle Impact, so Raiden Shogun is just convenient for that. And in terms of healing, Baizu fulfills Kuki's role, uh, in addition to giving more buffs. Uh, that being said, if you have uh, Yaimiko, she's going to do much better than Raiden Shogun as an Electro off-field unit. Uh, alternatively, you can run many other Electro units. You could run a combination of uh, Dory as a healer slot, and then you could have Kazuha, and what would happen is you would proc Dory's ult, infuse Kazuha, and then swirl Kazuha's Electro self-infusion from Dory in order to obtain the Electro infusion on his ult 100%. This does two things. First of all, it guarantees that your Kazuha is going to be infused with Electro, and it allows all them to constantly proc spread alongside Nahida. Uh, another options that you can use, again, El Hitham has many teams, is you can run a Burgeon team with Toma, where Toma is going to be proccing your Burgeons as a Burgeon sub-DPS, and El Hitham is going to be the driver. That being said, I do not recommend this team. There are better options in terms of uh, drivers than El Hitham. Uh, despite the fact that El Hitham does work, he's not going to be the best in a Burgeon team. Uh, and... The final and most, the final significant uh, archetype that El Hatham can be ran in is going to be a very basic and very well known Hyper Bloom team. And for a Hyper Bloom team, you ideally want to run him alongside someone like Kuki, where you're going to build Kuki and full EM. And your other slots are going to be uh, a Hydro Applier like Sincho or Yelan. And then someone like Nahida or Yao Yao to apply deep wood memories on the enemies so that your hyper bloom damage and your split damage from El Haytham is going to be higher. That being said, I have to say, if your El Haytham is C2 or higher, it becomes more and more optimal to run him in a pure spread team because El Haytham is designed to be a spread DPS. The reason he can work in a hyper bloom team is because hyper bloom as a reaction is very, very broken. But El Haytham's damage is more than enough to overcompensate for that. Uh, especially if you have him at C2 or higher, and at C6 it's a no-brainer, you just turn him in a pure spread team. Uh, but again, El Haytham's teams are very, very diverse, they're very flexible. You can run him with virtually any Hydro, Electro, and uh, Dendro unit. Some Enemu units can work, again, like Sucrose or Kazuha. But do keep in mind that in most teams, El Haytham is going to be your main on-field DPS, even though he does have some uh, quick swap potential. It is not recommended. He's not the best in terms of quick swap. He is very streamlined to be your main on-field DPS, and he does take some on-field uh, time. Well, a, a significant on-field time. He does take a minimum of 8 seconds, 8 to 12 seconds, which can be a uh, con for some people. That being said, I don't really consider it a bad thing in particular, just because when you pull El Haytham, you're pulling him to be a Dendro main DPS, and Expecting him not to be a Dendro main DPS that takes a lot of on-field time is not really a logical conclusion to to go for. Uh, in terms of characters to pull for, again, all of the characters coming in patch 3.7, which includes uh, Yaimiko, Kazuha, El Haytham, Kirara. Well, I didn't talk about Kirara. Kirara is going to be fun. She's going to be good. Not, not the best... Uh, Dendro unit, but she's going to be functional. Uh, regardless, in terms of flat star reruns, Yoimiya, Kazuha, El Haytham, and Yaimiko, they're all going to be good characters. I just wanted to make this video in order to talk about El Haytham's, uh, El Haytham's potential. I do think that most people understand he's a strong character. I just think that a lot of people don't realize that he is better than what they probably think. He is a very solid character, a very good character. You're probably not going to regret him if you pull him, because I don't really see a good on-field main DPS unit that is going to come in the future as good as El Haytham for at least a year. You can you can hold my word for at least one year. I don't think Fontaine is going to have any main on-field Dendro damage dealers. Hopefully this uh, doesn't age like cheese, though. 
Uh, but again, uh, thank you all for watching this video. I hope the best of luck in your pulls. I hope you get all the characters that you want, all the weapons that you want. I hope you get all the artifacts that you want. That being said, I think these wishes are over ambitious. But regardless, again, best of luck in your pulls. Uh, please give El a chance if you if you want to try him. If you if you are on the verge, I do think you're gonna like him. Do give him a chance. He's gonna be a very good character. And he does function well with a lot of the characters that are coming out in the future. I do think that he's going to work really well in Fontaine later on. Because Dendro in general works just really well with Hydro. Uh, thank you all for watching and have a great rest of your day.